Oh, hey guys, welcome to the cottage. Now that we've got her all framed up, we're about to put our roof on. We've been working hard installing our SIP panels. Our floor has been ground down, our first step. We're ready to start framing walls and roofs. Let's do this. Let's go. On the last episode, we poured our concrete slab, which has all of our services in it. It's insulated. We even started grinding the top because it's gonna be our finished floor. Now the exciting part, we're building the structure, putting up walls, putting up a roof. It's almost there. Oh yeah. All right, our next step is laying out the walls. What we're gonna be doing is taking our air and vapor barrier, flipping it over our anchor bolts that we've set into the wet concrete. We'll be puncturing holes through it and then sealing that with acousta seal and spray foam. Once that's all wrapped over, we'll be installing the base plate for our wall panels. We're using pressure treated because why the heck not use a pressure treated bottom plate for everything that you do that's anywhere near grade. Once this is in and sealed securely to the air barrier, we will install our wall panels. They will slide on top of this. First, we will install two lines of spray foam so that it gets sealed nicely to this. We will end up wrapping the air barrier and vapor barrier up onto the panel, acoustic sealing it to the panel and taping it to the panel, making for an airtight building structure. These are our wall panels. All of the exterior walls are made of EPS foam. EPS foam that is sandwiched between two layers of OSB. They have no thermal bridging, which means you might think that your house is well insulated, but even a two by four is not insulation. It doesn't conduct like steel, but it still allows heat to transfer. This foam does not. This wall panel is still fairly thin, but it's rated at R49. That's almost to the point of redundancy, where even if the wall was thicker and more insulated, it wouldn't even help. The air tightness is is easily achieved by using wall panels, by using spray foam to seal each panel to the next panel. And then we also acoustic seal each joint and tape it. How do we attach the panels to one another? Let me show you. Now each panel has a recess. The panel will sit on that one board that I fastened to the anchor bolts and that's how we'll fasten the bottom. But when it comes to fastening a panel to a panel, we've got these keys. They fit in and with a little bit of spray foam before pushing these in, we'll create our joint. So we put one on then we spray foam, spray foam and attach our next panel. Oh yeah.
right, welcome to our beautiful cottage. We've now got all of our SIP panels up. They have four functions. They're the structure of the building. They have the insulation incorporated into the panel. They also are our air barrier and our vapor barrier. We start assembling these things in the corner. We screw a two by eight to that with acoustic sealant. And we gotta be really careful to seal everything in between every panel, top, bottom, and sides. This building is gonna be more airtight than any house that you've ever seen. The cool thing also about this is in three days, I personally was able to assemble everything you see here, which is enough to land trusses on a building and it's already insulated. So in three days, one guy was able to build a 2,800 square foot cottage almost. That's crazy. Leaf blowers on the fritz. So we're doing the Flintstones method. Good broom is when it's got the hard bristles here and then it's got the soft ones here. So you can be firm and gentle at the same time. Do you guys care about brooms? With the panels, you can't just knock a stud over if you're in the wrong spot. So you really wanna make sure that you have it figured out before you start putting them up because to take it down and move it is almost not possible. Well, anything is possible, but it's a pain in the ass. The other thing you'll notice is I don't have any braces going to the wall. But even though they're kind of loose, they're, they're still holding themselves up very well. That's because we spray foam the bottom and then we leveled the panels both ways. Because the panels are eight inches wide, it gives it a pretty decent footprint to level in and out. So I don't have to recheck these openings. I, I've checked them all and they're still good. Just put the plate in and away we go. It's my wife, Lynn. <laughs> Lynn has helped me out with a lot of the projects that I've done for our customers and also projects that we are doing for ourselves. A lot of behind the scenes, Colin's teaching me the trade. Lynn has helped a lot with the design. She goes on to the internet and finds pictures of things that she likes. Any sort of decor or any, I, I helped you with some of this too because you did the layouts and we talked about what would be better for the clients or as what, what we would see ourselves. Yeah. We've also been talking to the town of Huntsville as well. We've talked to the mayor. So we've talked about maybe uh, starting this like passive housing and getting people more informed about it because it's a, it's a quite a big thing out west. So I think with each project, we would do something different. So for this one, this is the first one. So you're really starting with the bare bones. So with every step that you're doing, you're learning something. Uh, if you don't put the nails in right away, that foam pushes the pieces apart, what, you know, whatever you're doing. So that's the nice thing about the foam. Even if you do mess it up a little bit when you're putting something together, it'll go like... Bleh. When I was pricing out the different wall systems, I had originally planned for a 2x4 wall and a big gap with insulation and then another 2x4 wall. So the wall would have been about 16 inches thick or so, and that would have given us the same R value as this wall. But when I priced out the material, it was the same price, if not more, than for this system. And this system, I don't have to frame an entire stick framed house twice, nor insulate it. I'm not even in the least bit itchy. And the other cool thing is that we gained an extra foot. So we put that foot towards the width of our great room because we might as well make the great room even greater. So talking about these walls, when I had originally looked at this job, I had planned to do two full walls with an air gap between with just solid bats of insulation in between. But this is a much better method, way more economical, time saving. If you don't have a house that's built like this from the start, you can still use this technology on your existing house to create a really good thermal envelope. The nice thing about this is it's so lightweight. And if you're doing a retrofit, you can buy these panels, maybe even a little thinner, whatever you like and it's only got sheeting on one side. So the sheeting would go on the outside of your house. You basically can put these panels all along the outside of your house and use long screws with a nice big fat head on them and screw it to your existing house and build a house like this around your house and seal it all in. And it's quite economical to do so.
I was just throwing a pad down here for the outrigger. The outrigger will uh, basically stabilize the machine so it doesn't tip over. It creates like a wider stance. Attempting to take the 40 foot trusses, pick them up and put them onto the 22 foot truck deck and then drive them back and set them up onto our scaffold. And this is this is really important because we can't rent a forklift. We've tried everywhere and everywhere is booked. We're on waiting lists that are like a month long to rent a zoom boom. It could have easily helped me install the panels and hang the trusses. So cross your fingers for me, will you? Look at that, got the trusses up. And these are the fancy ones too, not bad. The whole place is going together like it's a kit. You can see our overhang is a ladder frame that attaches to one truss and then the following two trusses are slightly lower to allow that ladder to sit on top. That's just good for having a snow load on the edge of your roof in the middle of winter. We're also, instead of using asphalt shingles that made out of petroleum-based products, we're using steel. It's gonna last for 50 to 100 years. And also it's nice because it unloads the snow in the winter time. It just slides right off. We also, in the spirit of sustainability, put large overhangs on both sides of the house so that moisture, water, everything will be away from the edge of the wall. It never hurts to keep the water away from the living walls. So most people don't know this, but buildings actually account for up to 75% of a city's total carbon emissions. That is a lot. So while daily habits really add up, you could also build it from the ground up, so to speak, with a passive house. So of course, when it comes to cutting carbon emissions, we talk a lot about shopping local. We've been provided with product from... It's a company called Stolform. They're just a couple hours away. And the good thing about it too is this steel is Canadian made. It's the nice thing about a steel roof. You don't have to throw away a whole bunch of asphalt every 15 years. You know, things like the siding, we can get done locally at the mill. And that's just up the road. We need something that's like real wood. If we did vinyl siding on the cottage, it, it just would start feeling like it got <laughs> dunk, like banged out of a press and made out of plastic. So some natural materials will help this feel really cottagey. So uh, right now we're running uh, 120 grit 10 segs. This is our last metal bond pass before we uh, densify the floor. We will be using a lithium densifier down the road, but this is potassium, so you want the uh, floor to be more open. So uh, the molecules are bigger with potassium as opposed to lithium. So uh, we have the floor more open and porous, so it will absorb into the slab and make it harder. Our machines only get about a quarter inch or so from the wall, so I'm going to show you young Dylan here is uh, hand polishing our edges um, just to remove the final scratches and whatnot, and he will also progressively move up. Um, there is a lot of dust that hides under these walls that can kick back out that the vacuum might not keep up with. like bright sunny day, beautiful, great day to be grinding, rise and grind.
Guys, look at this. We've got our floors almost finished. Have you ever seen a concrete floor look this fancy? I think not. That's the Northern Touch. Now that Northern Concrete is almost finished doing the floors, I can go ahead and start framing this place in, which means that we can get our electrical in, and then we can get our plumbing. And once we get those inspected, we can start drywalling, and that's when this place really starts coming together. Let's go!